Hey guys, Nick here, welcome back to another video. Today in DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna be channeling our inner Thanos, creating like a particle dissolve effect. Let's take a look. So we haven't really messed with particles on this channel before, just because it's such a complicated topic and then you just do millions of videos on how particle systems work. And honestly, I would more likely do particles in a 3D application rather than fusion. Uh, for a lot of things anyway, but we're gonna do it in fusion today and show you how to create that cool little dissolve effect It is gonna be pretty complicated So I'm gonna assume a bit of prior knowledge before this tutorial So I'm not gonna cover how fusion works, but I'm gonna cover everything else for this tutorial So let's jump in and show you how to create this sick effect All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve now to create this effect that we were looking at before you see the text kind of just dissolves and looks super cool um, we're gonna have to do a lot of complicated things that maybe we haven't done before, especially on this channel. So let's get into it. First off, what we'll do is we'll break down the fusion composition that I already have made. All right, so we're gonna go into fusion just so you can see. So this is the node structure that we're gonna end up with, okay? Um, it's not as complicated as it looks. This little bit here, that's all the particles. So it's just four nodes. And then obviously the most complicated part, honestly, is this bit here, which is the masking that we're going to use to, I guess, make the text disappear. But let's start off by creating, right clicking in our media pool and going new fusion composition and call it whatever you want. We'll just leave fusion composition one, drag it down onto the timeline. Now you can make it as long or short as you want. We're just gonna leave it at a standard five seconds. With it selected, gonna jump over to Fusion. Now for this particular tutorial, we are gonna want two viewers. So you just wanna make sure that you have this one here. If it's two, have that. So you got two different viewers. And yeah, let's get started by creating our text node. So we're just gonna grab that text one there, drag it down and link it with our media out and type, call it whatever you want. We're just gonna call it Endgame and just change the size a little bit. Now, the first part we're gonna do is the masking to have the text disappear. All right, so now we're gonna create a polygon mask and that's going to make this text look like it's disappearing. So let's gonna jump to frame zero. Let's drag a polygon mask down from the tool here and display it in the first viewer by clicking and dragging. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create like a toothy kind of pattern, a jaggedy pattern. Again, not super exact. This is just to make it look like the text is being bitten away. And then all we're gonna to wanna to do is click up and around like so. Weird little shape. Again, doesn't have to be super specific. This is just so, looks a little bit more interesting. And while we're on frame zero, uh, we're gonna set a keyframe for the center and the size. And we're gonna move forward to the very end. Click and drag this front section of the shape. And we're literally just gonna click and drag it so that it covers the whole text. And if you notice that some of it's not covered, you can just add an extra point and make it so that the whole text is eventually covered by this shape here. And if we play that back, what we end up with is this weird shape that kind of grows over the text. So if we were to select the polygon, we can see it here. That's pretty good. Might add an extra point here just so that it looks like it's coming out a little bit more. This is just a bit of trial and error, but again, this is just to make it look like the text is being bitten away. Now, the thing is, the way we have it set now is if we were to use this as a mask, plug that in there, you can see that it sort of does the opposite, right? So the text kind of gets revealed by the shape, which in itself is kind of like a cool little effect. And if we were to invert the mask, well, then we have the opposite happening, the text. So we don't want that because this text is going to act as our particle emitter. So every time the text is on the screen, particles are going to be coming out of it. And although this would work, it means that this would be having particles flying out of it before it's getting chewed away by this mask. So we don't want that. What we are going to do, let's just change that invert, is we're going to basically make a shell inside of this so that we have just a weird mask sort of line. So if we were to have a look at the original one that we did, you can see how this mask here is just this weird line, right? So that's, Basically, so everything white is going to be visible, everything black is transparent, and as that white goes over the text, you get to see the particles. Looks pretty, pretty cool. So to do that, we're gonna do something kind of interesting. But before we do that, I do ask that if you enjoy this tutorial, guys, 
make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I do appreciate it and it allows me to bring more interesting tutorials like this one to you guys. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an instance of the polygon. It's similar to duplicating, except that it shares the exact same properties, animation and everything. So what we're gonna do is uh, Command or Control C to copy that polygon node. And then we're gonna go Command Shift V or Control Shift V to paste it. And what we get is this instance polygon here. All right, and what's weird is if I select either one, so we could have one displayed here and we'll have the polygon displayed here. As I move one, you can see the other one moves as well. And if I was to select the polygon and move it, it moves too. They're completely connected. All right, so what we're gonna do is create a merge node. So we're gonna drag this merge node down here. And this is gonna be the most important part for you guys to follow along with. So with the merge node selected, we're gonna drag the instance into the background and the polygon, this square here, into the foreground. Now we have to change a few things. So with the merge node selected, we wanna change the operation of it from over to X or, or X O R. What we want to do, let's display this merge node here, is we want to basically have the instance, we're gonna play around with the border. See how we can do that and it's creating a border. We wanna play around with that. However, at the moment, if we change the border parameter for the instance, as we talked about before, it'll change it for the polygon as well. To fix that, we can right click on the border width of the instanced one and we can go de-instance. Now that de-instancing is on a per parameter basis. So now when we control the border width, you can see we can, we're getting that effect that we're after, that will only change on the instance. So everything else in terms of soft edge will be across both of these different masks. That's done now. So we're gonna increase the border just a little bit and we're gonna give it a slightly soft edge, but nothing too crazy. And honestly, that's pretty much it for this little section. Now we can jazz it up a little bit by adding a noise. So if we go shift space, we're gonna type in fast noise. We're gonna use this one here. I'm gonna add. And we're just gonna connect this output to the merge. All right, and place that merge in here. Now, what we notice is currently it's like on top of the whole thing. That's not what we want. So we're gonna change the operation from over to in. So it's only gonna apply it to inside that mask there. And we can just play around with the parameters of the fast noise. So the reason we're doing this is just to make it a little bit more interesting. As I was saying, everything that is white is going to be visible. Everything black is going to be transparent. So by let's like we bring up this, bring up the scale a little bit, and then you can really see what's gonna go on. All right, we can bring in up the contrast, bring up the brightness. So these little bit of black, this black area here, that's all gonna be transparent. So the only reason we're doing this is by, it's just going to create a little bit more interest I guess when we're um, having this go over the text, right? Let's just add a little bit of pizzazz. Now, what we wanna do is turn this whole section into a bitmap image so we can use it to control the visibility of the text. What we're gonna do is we're going to go shift space and add a bitmap, all right? And we're gonna just drag that into the input there. That's going to create, turn this basically into an image that can be read by pretty much everything else. And it's not being treated as a mask anymore. It's being treated as an image, which is what we want. And we're going to probably disconnect this now, create what's called a matte control. So shift space, gonna go matte control. All right, we want it directly after the text. And we wanna plug the bitmap into the garbage matte input, which is going to be this bottom triangle here. You can see if you hover over it, it says garbage mat. So drag the square to the garbage mat. You can always check down this bottom right-hand corner to triple check you got the right input. Okay, so as you can see, if we play this through, currently we're kind of getting what we want, but it's the opposite, right? Because all this is visible. So basically what it's doing is all the black is now visible and all the white is the transparent. It's the opposite to what we want. So if we select the mat control, go to the inspector under garbage mat, we drop the arrow, we just invert it basically. Now we're getting exactly what we want. You can see we're getting only the text is visible and that's the text we want. Now we can start playing around with particles, guys, and this is the fun bit. So what we're gonna do now is after the map control, we're gonna go shift space and we're gonna type in P emitter. With the P emitter selected, we're gonna go shift space, type in P render. And that's going to basically take the emission, which is this one here, you can see it's a 3D scene and turn it into a final render. But 
With, by default, the pRender node, if we go to the inspector, is set to a 3D scene as output. Just drop that, change it to 2D. So now if we go to the P emitter, it's a 2D scene and we can play through. You see we have these particles, it might be hard to see, but they're particles forming. And now we can connect that to the media out. So far, so good. But as you can see here, we just need to connect these together, which is currently impossible because the P emitter has no input, it only has an output. So what we wanna do is connect the MAC control to the P emitter and we wanna use this as the emitter for the particles that will get rendered by this node. To do that, with the P emitter node selected, go to the inspector, we're gonna to go to region. So this is basically, currently it's a sphere or because it's a 2D image, a circle. So you can see if I move this bigger or smaller, you can see it's increasing the region size of the particles. We don't want it to be a sphere, we want it to be a bitmap. So an imaged based region. Clicking that, now we have an input where we can connect the bitmap node, which is what we did here. So we create, connect that together, and we're going to get, give it a sec. You can see the P render node is doing a little bit of rendering, and it might be hard to see, but there are some particles here. So with the P emitter node selected, we go to controls. What we're gonna do, increase the amount of particles from 10 to just a thousand, just to start with. Again, every time you change something, you gotta wait for the renderer to render the particles out. You can see the particles, they appear, actually looks kind of cool like this. All right, but they're not going anywhere, okay? The particles, basically, they are generated from the text. What we're gonna wanna do now is we're going to use some displacement to have these particles basically fly off into the background. So we're going to go shift space with the emitter selected, and basically everything that affects the emitter needs to go before the renderer because that's what creates the final image, right? So we're gonna type in P and D. P directional force, we're gonna go add, and we're gonna just let that render out for a sec. Now you can see we have something crazy going on. So if we play this back, now the particles emit and then they fall because that's the way the directional force is having them fall. Looks kinda cool, it's like falling sand. Um, obviously we can control that, so if we select the directional force, we can change the strength and how strong that is. We can also change the direction. So we're not, we don't want it to go down, we want it to go up. So we want a positive number. So we're gonna have 90 degrees. Again, we're gonna let the P render node sort it out. So now, the node, now they go up, which is good. I kinda want a bit more of an angle, so we're going to just control the angle a little bit. Hopefully it comes off this way a bit. We wait for the renderer. This is probably the worst part about using particles is the renderer needs to use everything in the scene. Basically make sure this, yep. So now it's going in the right direction. 60 seems to be good, so I'm gonna change it to uh, actually 45 degrees. So it's gonna be directly like that. And we wanna do one more thing, because quite at the moment, pretty much it's just going up in a straight line, okay? So it's just, it's just going off in one direction. It's the direction we want it to go in, but it's kinda of just a little boring. So we're gonna do another node after the directional force, and it's a turbulence node. Think of it like turbulence when you're on a plane. It's going to displace these particles up here like that. So with it selected, go shift space, P, T for this one here, particle dis uh, turbulence rather, and hit enter. And again, as always, let the render node do its thing. And now you can see it's done a little bit, not a lot. If we hit space, you can see it's definitely doing something. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to increase the randomness of it a little bit, just a little bit. Strength over life, so we're gonna leave that. Density's fine, but we're gonna increase the strength a fair bit on the X and Z, not the Y, because the Y is going to, so X is gonna be horizontal, Y axis is going to be vertical, Z strength is the depth of the particles. We don't want to increase the Y strength because then some of the particles are gonna go down. We don't really want that. So we want the particles to go left and right and back like in and out. So we're gonna increase the strength and then give it a sec, let it render itself. We might not see a big change. All right, now we play it. Now it seems to be doing something cool. So what we wanna do now is go back to the emitter. We've got our force. It's kind of going away in the direction we want. It kind of looks like it's blowing away, which is cool. Now we just need to control the amount of particles. So what I like to do is honestly particles we use you know, in like visual effects, you need hundreds of thousands, millions of particles. Obviously the more particles you use, the uh, more intensive it is. I'm gonna just bump this to 3000, let it render. And then I'm leaving it on this frame just so I can see how it affects this exact scene in the 
So you can see, there we go, we get quite a bit. I'm also going to increase the variance just so it's a little bit random, change the random of the lifespan and the random seed there just a little bit. So now it kinda looks all right, okay? But it's going out in chunks, which is a little bit weird. Let's increase the position variance, all right? And by doing that, they're hopefully not gonna clump together as much, because obviously at the moment they're clumping together. The position variance should help randomize that a little bit. There we go. So that is going to help it. Obviously they're going to be emitted from the same text, but then they're gonna disperse and it's going to look a little bit more like sand or dust or whatever. There you go, looks awesome. And we're gonna add a blur to the renderer. So we're just gonna do a slight, literally like a really slight 0.1 blur to the 2D and that'll be about it. It's not gonna be something you're gonna to notice too much. You'll wait for it to load. You might see a little bit of a change here and that's just going to kind of fake motion blur a little bit, make it look a little less, I don't know, dotty as it does now. But at the moment, if we were to look at the media out node and see what we've got, the text kind of fading away. So looking pretty good. So now we can play around with the colors. So in the original one, I, we got a style and you can see color controls. So you got a, a few interesting ones actually, which is with the color controls, you can actually have it use style color or use color from region. So if um, say the object you wanted was multiple colors, you're using an image, you could do that. We're gonna use style color, which is gonna use the color from this tab, just cause we're just gonna use the two. I'm gonna go uh, aqua. And what we can do is do color over life. So we can actually have it change color the older the particles get. So it starts off aqua, we can have it end white at a point, start at aqua. So click and drag, start at aqua and then Add another one here, maybe make it a darker. So it's gonna go darker and then white over time. You can see now there's a little bit of a change in how it works. This is obviously probably gonna be easier if we change the lifespan now. So the lifespan set to 276 frames, we might not even see it. If I drop that right down, you'll notice after it renders, the color will come in because obviously the particles aren't lasting as long. Therefore, we're gonna see that color come through. There you go and ends white. So definitely play around with how all of this works so you can see what effects you can get. But yeah, that helps. Kind of looks a little different. All right, so now all we wanna do is one last thing. As you can see, the text pretty much is invisible at the start. And then our mask comes in and then the particles start to show up. So how do we have the text stay in put? Pretty simple, we're gonna copy the original text node, so control, control or command C, click over here, paste it. We're gonna merge it in after the renderer. So now we can see it, perfect. Change the color of it to match the um, particles here, if we want, so it looks better. And we can literally click this polygon, the original, not the instance, again, copy it, select the text, paste it, and now, it's going to use the exact same animation, but we just want to invert the mask. So we're going to click on the polygon and invert it. And then once we've inverted it, we also just want to make it solid. So as it comes through, it will take the text up. So now if we were to play this through, you can see the text comes through, it starts to dissolve and fade off into wherever it's going. Looks super cool. This one even looks better than the original, the way it's sort of eating away at the text there. I really, really like it. And we can obviously just add a quick background if we want to finalize this one off, drag it in, change the, uh, swap the inputs because we don't want that to be in the front. So swap inputs and change the color, maybe just a little bit less of a dark, to a dark gray. And yeah guys, there you go. That's how it's done. So we click through and you can see the text basically dissolve like so. There you go guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy these sorts of more complicated visual effects tutorials on this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video because more is on the way. And yeah, drop a comment down below if there's any specific effect you want to see achieved. I'll, you know, try my best to make it happen. And until the next video guys, see ya.